Today we will take a look inside a portable air conditioner. I will make a teardown and show you all the important components. And on the way I will explain you how any air conditioner works and how each component will do its job. Even if the inside looks complicated, the principle of this machine is very simple and I hope that you will understand it. You will learn what is the condenser, the compressor, evaporator, refrigerant fluid and the expansion valve. By giving a look at the components, the animations that I will show you and the explanation along that will give you a general idea on how to absorb the heat from the interior of our house and eject that heat on the outside. So guys, let's get started. Video sponsored by GLC PCB. They have services for PCB manufacture of 2, 4 or 6 layers, starting from only $2 for 5 PCBs of 100 by 100 mm. Other services are the stainless steel stencil for soldering with solder paste and the SMT assembly where they will solder the components for you automatically using high technology machines for a professional finish. So just go to glcpcb.com, upload the Gerbers, select what you want and place the order in a couple of minutes. What's up my friends, welcome back! I bought this air conditioner this summer and I needed a portable one because it's impossible to install a condenser part on the exterior of my apartment. So having a portable model is basically the worst solution and the least efficient and later I'll explain you why. So let's open it first, see the main components and I'll explain what each does. I take out the plastic cover and we can directly see two main components. So just a few screws and I take out that plastic cover. This here on top is called the evaporator. And this other one here which looks the same is called the condenser. So here we can already see a temperature thermocouple sensor. And on these tubes here we have yet another thermocouple for another temperature measurement. Between these radiators we can see a turbine fan and later we will see that there is a second fan above this. On the front plastic cover we have some electronics. We have some sort of driver or a microcontroller for the 7 segment display, some push buttons, the LEDs as indicators and the infrared receiver for the remote. The wires are connected to the controller board inside of this metal case. On the vent here we have a small step motor that will make the fan move up and down and by that we push the air in more directions. Ok, so below here, on the inside, we have a huge component and this is called a compressor. So from and to this compressor we can see a lot of copper tubes that are going to those radiators or from those radiators. On the output of the compressor we also have this component that is called a muffler and this is used to reduce the buzzing and hissing noise from the compressor. On this copper tube circuit we can also see this component here and this is called an expansion valve. Actually this setup is using an expansion valve that is based on a capillary tube which is just a long copper tube with a very small internal diameter to restrict the refrigerant flow and we'll see why in a moment. Inside this metal case we have the controller electronics for the compressor. I open it and the first component that stands out is this huge capacitor. This is actually a high voltage capacitor of only 25 microfarads and is used to start the motor of the compressor. On the PCB we can see some voltage regulation transformers, we have a small microcontroller with the crystal clock and here we have something that looks like a big relay probably for the compressor. And then we have two more smaller relays here for controlling the ventilator and so on. So this PCB receives information about the temperature and the set point from the user control PCB and then decides when to start the motor of the compressor. Ok, so now let's understand how the air conditioner works. Any basic conditioner has two main components that are called radiators. One will get colder than the room temperature and the other one will get hotter. Obviously by the laws of thermodynamics the temperature always wants to get stable at an equal value so the cold radiator will absorb the heat from the room and the hot radiator will expose that heat on the outside of the room. So how is this implemented? How is this able to make one side cold and the other one hot? 
Well, through these radiators we have some copper tubes that are closed in a loop. So it's coming out from the compressor, through the evaporator, then we pass through the expansion valve and then to the condenser and from here we get back into the compressor and repeat. So we have a copper coil on the cold side which is called the evaporator and another coil on the hot side which is called condenser. Through this copper tube circuit there is a refrigerant liquid flowing. And between these tubes we have two more important components. One is the compressor and the other one is the expansion valve. This compressor will increase the pressure of the refrigerant inside of the tubes. Like this we have the high pressure going onto the hot side and the low pressure coming from the cold side and that's very important. The compressor is just as any other air compressor but is enclosed inside of this black metal container in order to prevent leaking and also reduce the noise. Nowadays we use a screw compressor instead of a basic piston compressor. The basic one consists of a motor and a piston with a valve and that will push the air in one direction increasing the pressure. The higher is the pressure of this liquid the higher the temperature will also get. So now we have this hot gas that is going to the condenser. Now because the outside temperature is lower than the condenser temperature, this will eject the heat outside. To help this process we have a fan that will make more air from the outside to pass through this condenser. And to help even more, on top of these copper tubes we have some small aluminum radiators that will increase the surface area and by that more air is in touch with it so this heat ejection process is done faster. In case of my AC unit, here are the ventilators for the condenser and the evaporator and they use the same motor. And also as you can see, on top of the copper coils we have these small aluminum grids to increase the surface area so more air is in contact with the cold and the hot radiators. During this heat ejection phase, the gas inside of the tube is losing temperature and gets condensed to a liquid. So now at the output of the condenser we have that expansion valve which in our case is based on a capillary tube which is just a long copper tube with a very small internal diameter in order to restrict the refrigerant flow. If the flow is restricted, like this we can separate the high pressure on one side and the low pressure on the other side. But when the pressure drops, the refrigerant will turn back into a gas. Now this refrigerant is a special liquid, is not water. It's a special substance that will boil at room temperature. A commonly used liquid is the R22 or the R290. And as you can see my model is using the R290. And by the way, this is a very contaminating product that is damaging the ozone layer a lot. Anyway, when the pressure drops, the boiling point of the refrigerant also drops and the liquid will turn into a gas. So that means that some energy was supplied to the system and this energy will come from the liquid itself. So when the refrigerant loses energy, that means it will get colder. To understand better, just imagine a deodorant spray. Inside of the can the substance is in a liquid state at high pressure. But as soon as you release it outside, since the pressure is much lower, it automatically boils turning into a gas. This boiling process needs energy and that is absorbed from within the liquid and that's why you feel the spray very cold. As you can see the spray goes down to minus 30 degrees or lower. And the same happens in case of a gas lighter. If you take out the butane, which is in a liquid state inside at high pressure, it will automatically turn into a very cold gas. As you can see, even the water vapor from the room frozen on top of this thermocouple. So that's how we can get cold liquid refrigerant on the room side and hot gas on the outside. Let's see this process once again but faster. So this cold refrigerant will absorb the heat from the room and by that will get a bit hotter. The compressor increases the pressure once again and this will get even hotter. And on the condenser the heat is ejected on the outside and in this process the refrigerant is lowering the temperature and changing back into a liquid. And finally when this liquid passes rapidly from high pressure to low pressure it turns back into a gas and at very low temperatures. From here the process repeats on and on. On the cold radiator part of the heat is absorbed as condensation and the vapor inside of the room will turn into water 
so that's why you can usually hear some water drops or you can even see some wet surfaces on your air conditioner. This condensation water is usually stored below into a container or for the outside version we have a small exit tube through which the water is ejected. In my case this water is stored just below in this container and you could remove it periodically with a pump using this tube here. As you can see we have a very small wheel here with a motor that will intentionally splash some water from the container onto the condenser so when this water evaporates even more energy will be absorbed and pushed outside. On this water container we also have a floating sensor and this will inform to the controller board when the container is full. Just at the outside of this evaporator we have another thermocouple to measure the temperature and this is important in order to know the state of the refrigerant inside because we must make sure that the refrigerant is going to the compressor in a gas state. For my air conditioner we have a single motor for both fans. One fan is pushing hot air from the room through the evaporator and the second fan is pushing the air to the hot condenser. For this portable model, the hot air that is coming out from the condenser is ejected outside of the room through this big tube. Now you remember that I told you at the beginning that this portable AC is not efficient at all and is the worst model. Why? Well in this case both the condenser and the evaporator are inside of the same room. So the evaporator will push cold air into the room and the condenser will use that cold air to cool itself. So in this case the condenser will heat up the air that was just cooled down and that is not efficient at all. And there is more, since the condenser is sucking air from the room and then pushing the hot air outside of this room through this tube, that means that the overall pressure inside of my room is lower than the pressure outside. So since the atmosphere wants equilibrium, in some way the hot air from the outside will find its way back into the room. The best way scenario is to have the evaporator inside of the room and the condenser on the outside of the room. Nowadays air conditioners are starting to use a screw compressor instead of a basic piston compressor. These are much more silent and efficient and best of all we can control their speed easily and by controlling the speed we can control the refrigerant flow and by that the temperature absorption and expulsion. The restriction valve is called a metering device. This could be a capillary tube as for this simple design or sometimes we could use a dedicated expansion valve that will regulate the flow with a moving valve inside. And there is more, we sometimes use a so called TXV or thermostatic expansion valve and this is operated by a copper bulb full of liquid. So this bulb is placed here at the output of the evaporator. If the temperature from the evaporator is low enough, the liquid inside of the bulb will expand and that will push a diaphragm inside of the valve and by that increasing the flow of the refrigerant. But if the temperature is not yet low enough, so maybe the refrigerant is still in the liquid state, the liquid inside of the bulb will retract and by that closing the valve. This process is made in order to make sure that the refrigerant will go into the compressor in a gas state, since the liquid will damage its internals, because these compressors are made to work exclusively with gas. So that's how an air conditioner works and these were all the components that you could find in a basic one. You might find some more components in a product that is more expensive and that has more tech, but the basic ones are these. So I hope that you have learned something new and if so give me a like and consider subscribing. Thanks again and see you later guys. Hey guys Electronoops here, thank you for watching this episode on my channel and uh, your support is great for me. But if you want to beat this YouTube algorithm, because as you know, teaching and uh, learning videos are not very popular, you can make a stupid or maybe a funny video and it will get viral in a moment. But for us, for teaching videos and stuff like that, it won't be very easy to get over this YouTube algorithm. So please, maybe you will leave a comment below, maybe you will give a like and subscribe and also activate the notification bell and like that we will win this uh, YouTube algorithm. And by the way, if you want to also support my projects, your comments and your likes are very well welcomed. But I'm also on Patreon, so you just click the link below for patreon.com slash electronoops and maybe you can select one of the tires. And by that you will be able to see my videos before the YouTube release. You can comment, you can get the files for my project and depending on the tire, maybe even receive a, a t-shirt like this one. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for your support and I'll see you in the next project. Keep up you guys.